So I'm Gavin Clinch. Um, Karina is here beside me. Oran Doherty from uh, Letterkenny. Unfortunately, can't can't make it. Uh, today is in Scotland on an RPL tour. Um, so the, the 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 project then addresses the recognition of prior learning, um, and the, the 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 coalition or the 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 the, the Connacht Ulster Alliance partners have, have built. Um, an e-portfolio, and we've developed this over the last um, year and a half between the three partners. So I'm just going to give you an overview of of what we've done and where we're going to uh, work and build upon that. Okay, so it, it's about the, the the assessment of of learning, um, and we know that um, RPL is latent within within this country. Uh, there's a lot of people in the workplace aren't aware of RPL. There's a, there's a big demand for, um, for, from, from part-time learners to move quickly through the education process and to, to achieve the qualifications that they often need. Um, so the, we need to address this, um, and we, what we've done is, is an attempt to do that. So the RPL um, Roadshow is going to build upon this, this work, and we've, we've built a website. This is the front page of the, of the website. So this is a this is a, a port of call information about the RPL process. What is RPL? And it, it kind of gets away from or gets around the fact that a lot of institutions don't have RPL coordinators. They don't have our, anybody there that can actually talk about RPL. So there's, a, there's an information site here. Um, and it, it goes through the process of what RPL is and how, how to apply for it. So well, what we have is the, 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 uh, an applicant applies for a program on, on the course. Maybe they get told by head of department or by the program coordinator that they need they don't meet the standard entry requirements. They need to make an RPL application. So they look through the website. Um, they move on to the application process. They log in here. This is now in Moodle. We selected Moodle um, because it allows for the assessment of learning. Once they log in. They skip through this process, which is just a number of tells them that the steps that they have to go through. Uh, they have to tick a box to say that they have actually applied for the program because we don't want people just applying for RPL. We don't even know that they're in the system. And then they look at, uh, they come to this page here. So this is this really is predicated on some of the practice that we had and that they had in Left Kenny. Um, there are five tabs here along the top. So the first one is that they give a profile of themselves and they can say something about themselves in a couple of hundred words here um, and say who they are. And then they, I don't have all of the, uh, these are just screen grabs, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this. But they can, they can talk about their, their work experience, they can talk about their educational experience, they can upload all of the information that they have so they can scan in copies. Of the of the certificates, or they can upload any any work projects that they've done, any formats that we're that we're kind of accepting, um, and so it's all here in one in one location. Um, and this uh, this kind of collection then that we can all kind of that the heads of departments can look into, um, and that we can we can manage. In a, in a much better way than any kind of idiosyncratic practice that, that goes on, even within an institute, the different departments have taken different approaches to, to RPL. So this is the assessor view. Um, the assessor goes in once an application has been made and they've been notified that somebody has applied for their program. The assessor goes in, clicks on the applicant, um, can make sorry, can make notes in here, and then they effectively they're either approving or uh, not approving the application. If they approve the application, then it, the action can be, we're missing the, the end of that slide, but they can, they can uh, sign off on that, um, and then they can archive it once it's been ratified by the institute itself. So it's a simple, simple enough process to, to, to go through. Um, so the Tell Week itself is designed to develop the RPL assessor and mentoring skills to engage with the e-portfolio. So how does an assessor actually work with the e-portfolio, work with this technology, uh, work the way through it? And how does an institute uh, manage it as well? I mean, this is, this is as I say, it's in Moodle, it's branded Connacht Ulster Alliance, that's our, that's our grouping, but this, we can hand this over to any institute or cluster. Uh, that they can take it, they can rebrand it, they can use the technology in behind it, and they can host it themselves. 
So the tail week is going to, to cover that, the skills development um, roadshow, um, and we're going to reach four, the plan is to reach four higher education institutes across the country in, in the tail week, uh, in dates really in, in April and May, not one single week. So the institutes that sign up for the roadshow and the, that engage with this will, um, will be given this copy of, uh, of this Moodle plugin, which they can host themselves. And it's about 600 euro per annually, I think, to host. So it's not expensive. Karina. OK. You can keep going. <laughs> um, good morning. My name is Karina Ginty. I'm from Galway Mayo Institute of Technology. So just to continue on from Gavin's um, overview there of our tool, what are we actually going to do? So what we have proposed is that we would work with four higher education institutes um, in Ireland, and one in particular that we have been discussing this project with um, in advance of coming here today, because it's been moving a little bit further, is DCU, and Mark Glynn is here with us today. So we have tools that we want to share with each other. So, um, and there is also other institutes that are interested in this, but we're not going to talk about that today because we want to see how this project goes and if it gets funding and all of that. So what we plan to do is, um, in order to roll out this tool across four higher education institutes, we need to provide a set of Opal Educational Learning Resources for um, the staff that are involved in engaging and developing uh, this tool within their own institute. So we have proposed developing uh, an assessment type open educational resource and one that's linked to mentoring as well because the role of assessor and the role of a mentor is quite different and when you're managing their journey through the RPL process we need to understand the roles and responsibilities of each of those um, people. So, um, so, so that's one element. There obviously would be a site visit built in to that program, a site visit with that higher education institute and the staff involved. We also want to involve an international case. We've worked quite closely with people in Scotland who um, are very well advanced in the whole area of RPL and um, also we have contacts in France and in Australia and in, in the US. So collectively we'd love to have four lovely webinar pieces or open educational resources that would be pre-recorded and we could share them with, with the uh, partners involved. Um, and we'd like to say that we could share this with everybody in the country, but I suppose we have to be reasonable at what can we do in a short space of time, and can we build a case with four institutes, and that might be a case and a stepping stone for the future. Um, so also, we think it's really important here to build this online community of RPL practitioners who are engaged with using this type of technology or engaged with assessing RPL applicants within their own institute. And you're probably familiar with some of the figures. Uh, lifelong learning participation rates uh, is at 7.3% in Ireland compared to 10.5%, which is the EU, EU average. And if we look at the, um, on, or the employed um, sector, it, it's only at 6.2% compared to the EU average of 11.2%. So straight away, you know, we see that we need to provide technology tools like this to enable access into higher education and try and build up those numbers. So by doing that, we can't just do that in the CUA. We want to be able to share these tools, these technology tools, to other providers so that we can try and bring up these rates in the future. So, uh, and then creating this online community for R RPL practitioners, it's quite timely. I know that uh, the QQI, in the last couple of months, they've been trying to work out um, a, a network of practitioners in this space and trying to get them to work together and share resources. So perhaps that can tie in with that as well. Then we'd like to see that um, participants gain uh, a digital badge for their participation in this. and. The, uh, the, you know, the, the project All Aboard, which is already exists, uh, which is running very well, and NUI Galway are, have a close relationship with us as well because they're part of the cluster. So we'd like to be able to tap in with them and see how can we create a digital badge for people that engage on our RPL roadshow and engage with this tool. Um, where do we need money or how, how will we do it? We obviously need technology support there's only the three of us, there's myself, there's Gavin, and there's Oren in Letterkenny, and we've been driving this project for 
it's it's actually over two years now from the start the idea and then building testing the site we've been piloting it over a year we've had about 64 applicants that have engaged in this tool we've got feedback from it we've changed the tool we've developed it further it's now a lovely tool that can plug into other institutes and working very well. We've adapted it even to uh, include a challenge exam or assessment piece where if there is a gap in somebody's portfolio that they can actually uh, complete a challenge assignment or an exam that is set by that assessor to ensure that are we checking everything, you know, we're not just dismissing that candidate, we're actually testing or evaluating them. So. Um, so to, to roll this out, we would need some technology support, and that's where the funding would go. And we would also need um, some support for learning technologists. We've uh, engaged um, a, a Moodle technologist uh, programmer for some of the project and some of the features that we've needed to bring it to this stage. If we were to share it across four institutes, we would need some support to ensure that it went seamlessly into those institutes. Um, that's really it. Um, we need funding to pay for, obviously, the OERs and making sure that they're lovely, professionally branded, they can be used uh, across any institute. How will we promote it? Well, we already have the site established, myexperience.ie. We have, uh, through social media, we would set up uh, the Twitter hashtag. There's also LinkedIn groups, ILTA, um, institution websites through the forum and through the associates, the new associates group that um, has been renamed. And um, there was another group, Gavin, as well, Helen. that we were talking Helen. about. Helen. Helen. Helen, as well. And um, how will we evaluate the impact? Again, we would like to see um, a survey built into an evaluation tool and a survey tool built into our myexperience.ie website. We would do some participant interviews, focus group session, and um, the looking at coverage around it. Because it is a, a big national topic as well, and looking at participation rates in higher education, this is a good news story. This is a tool that will help build and, and uh, engagement um, and interest in taking on higher education programs. If you have institutes across the country from the west, the east, the south, and in the centre of Ireland engaging and trialling and testing a tool that's going to give access to higher education, we would see that it would perhaps give some PR coverage around that as well. So, um, any questions? <laughs> Thank you.